Okay, so earlier in this track, we, we've heard about the customer journey and customer interactions and now data. Uh, this is a good lead in to our next speaker, uh, Anna Gong, who is the CEO and, and founder of, uh, of Perks Technologies. Um, Anna, welcome. Thank you, John. So Anna, we're, now that we know about customer journey and we know a little more about data, we're, we're keen to know how we can make money from this. So uh, we're, we're really looking forward to your presentation. Um, can I just check that your, uh, your screen is uh, sharing okay? Can you you see my there? screen? Can you put it in presentation mode? Is that good? That's, that's perfect. Okay. okay, over to you. Great, thank you so much. So this is the million dollar question, how to monetize on the data-led customer actions uh, with your APIs. Um, Perks is 100% API driven, uh, which is a plug and play uh, business model. And we're proud to share some of our learnings with you today and how our customers have been monetizing on data-led customer actions. And today's flow um, will go through the evolution of customer experiences, uh, through the data and power by APIs, how do we monetize on these customer actions, and then the proof of uh, some of these use cases that we have uh, generated. When you look at the evolution, most brands have uh, been transactional or transient, and that causes their customers to be transient and transactional. Um, how do you become a partnership where you can create meaningful relationships with your customers? And let's face it, the consumers are driving corporate strategy today. But looking back into the last you know, 30 years or so, you know, everyone talks about loyalty programs and it's primarily run in the last few decades like an ERP on the back end. It's, it's definitely run on premise uh, based on the finance and operational model and it's a glorified ledger. Earning and burning of points and then calculating breakage it was a very good solution back then, but then also it punishes the consumer because you expire my points and so forth. And it's not about instant gratification. It was great for airlines, great for hospitality and other programs. But um, as we evolve into the digital economy in the 2000s, the ad tech started to come up and creating a lot of vanity metrics, you know, the data management and data um, service providers. And those are, are the solutions or platforms that created click-through rates, impressions, likes, um, in, and that was about brand building, a popularity contest. Um, then you, in the last decade or so, many of these ad tech platforms uh, were producing way too much vanity metrics. Now, a million likes uh, produces what kind of ROI and monetization value, and that was unquantifiable. And so many brands started to push back by asking, how do I now manage these monetization models through the marketing spend? And so a lot of these guys uh, eventually pivoted and rebrand themselves to become customer data platforms. Instead of focusing on third party data and a universal data set and buying lists of customers, now you have a centralized data set where you're plugging into different segments like CRMs, uh, data analytics platforms and other tools and then now you're analyzing historical data and then you're making sense of what's the next best action for the marketers or head of revenue to perform. Uh, and now today in the super app economy where marketplaces, lifestyle oriented apps are all coming out of the woodwork. It's all about data in motion and how do you actually drive a lot more fluid business model and content rich uh, business model where it's all about consumers and so this is where I think the evolution has become where APIs have to power this kind of transient um, uh, model for, for consumers and if your customers are moving faster than you you have to manage them so instead of data at rest and messing with you know historical data we follow data in motion and so all trends points back to customer data if you look at the, you know, the evolution of mobile first fintechs and super apps, I would say um, I, Asia has finally been leading the West for some time in mobility and mobile innovation and creating also within the ecosystem of everyone wanting to become, become mobile first, 
a very competitive and gray landscape. And so you see that telcos are going into fintech, um, obviously Grab and, and Singta have formed a virtual banking in, uh, initiative and coalition. And then you have banks wanting to go into commerce. Uh, insurers are trying to go into marketplaces. Um, retailers are starting a fintech play. So everyone is trying to capture a wallet share or one of you know, the consumer uh, mind share as well as wallet share. Eventually there will be a lot of convergence and this is the formulation of why super apps are so important. How do you create and enable an ecosystem out of your own core business? A data-driven decision-led, you know, a decisioning uh, led by how APIs are driving this. You have to innovate faster. But innovating outside of core is a really critical, uh, I would say, next step and strategic move for many of the traditional enterprises. Even so, for the digital natives. And so, when you look at how do I instantly gratify my customers? How do I measure journey milestones and literally reward my customers and delight, surprise and delight them while they reach certain actions? Um, where am I in terms of integrating with my MarTech stack? There are 9,000 MarTech companies out there, marketing technology companies. And where do you belong and how often are you, or how many tools? Uh, there was data actually where's the sharing, uh, each uh, enterprise um, have at least or touch at least 40 different solutions or tools to communicate with one single unique customer. So can, can you imagine if you don't have an API uh, and the microservices layer architecture that really makes it cumbersome for you to interact with your customers. And when you look at customer experience, it's about am I actually driving even delightful last mile experiences, not just in app, but online to offline. And then the brand interactions, um, how are you actually communicating and, and dealing with content that moves ahead of your customers or meeting the demands of your customers? Today, unfortunately, many brands are actually reacting to customers and that is not good enough. When your customers don't even have eight seconds attention span and it takes you three months to engage them, that's unacceptable. And this is causing you know, a lot of innovation hurdles. And so how do you then manage some of the in-app um, transactions and analyze and then monetize on it. So all of this leads back to APIs and how flexible you are as an organization and, and your platform. Innovating be beyond your core is also a very big topic at the moment, enabling ecosystems. Everyone is talking about not just B2C, but how do you become a really robust B2B2C? And so monetizing on consumer data is also working with your ecosystem. If you look at Amazon, it took them 15 years to build their tech stack and backbone um, that powers the marketplace today. Thanks to APIs and flexible architectures, now you can actually power and enable an ecosystem within 30 days. And this is what Perks has been doing with some of the traditional enterprises as well as digital natives. We can manage to enable you to build that ecosystem of partners so that you can create net new revenue models. So this is where very is very, uh, very key. Because innovating outside of core, as a telco, you cannot sell so many different SIM cards and mobile plans and data plans. Your consumers need lifestyle. A bank, you can only sell so many different types of credit cards and mortgage and loans and so forth. Your consumer needs lifestyle. Um, retailers, if you're offline, you have to be on online. But if you're only one product or one, a few uh, services, now you're going into FinTech enabling you know, so there's so many different types of variations to look at. Um, being an e-wallet is not enough. Being a insurance manufacturer of plans and policies is not enough. Uh, so a lot of uh, different companies are looking ways to how to drive a flywheel effect and create that flywheel multiplier effect by creating these ecosystems and through RESTful APIs and so forth. The proof to the pudding and, and some of the use cases that we have one of the largest telcos in um, in Malaysia called Digi, and they just uh, announced a merger, a potential merger with Cellcom Axiara. So that could create the largest telco in Malaysia with possibly uh, 20 million subscribers. But with them, this is your traditional, uh, this is not your traditional telco app. They actually have become a super app front end where they are building a uh, M-commerce uh, marketplace by driving very special partnerships 
And the CMS layer is powered by Perks. All of the APIs are driving this entire marketplace and super app. And they can actually set up different services and partnerships on the fly. They can set up new categories, new, um, literally everything is controlled by them on our dashboard. On the back end, it drives customer actions. A lot of gamification campaigns can be executed, uh, as well as you know, really dynamically reconfigure different ways to drive uh, leveling up of memberships as well as loyalty and so forth. So you can do all of that. And they've been standing up a digital um, shop you know, a commerce uh, marketplace with 2,100 plus brands resulting in over 67 million in-app customer actions every month. And so when they first started with us, I think they were right around 2.7 million MAU and now they're reaching nearly 6 million MAU. So it's very powerful to uh, innovate outside of your core and this is not your traditional telco anymore, right? Because they're creating a lot more lifestyle oriented services and even like I think last month they had a front end banner right now featuring um, featuring Tinder, you know, during lockdown, um, you know, remotely, no one can travel. So there's a lot of dating on the apps. And so you can forge a lot of innovative partnerships at the sign of times where actually economically, political pressure, uh, whatever pandemic crisis hit, you are able to pivot your business model uniquely serving the customers at that time. So it's been a very, very, um, I, I would say eye-opening experience working with Digi. They're one of the more aggressive, innovative companies that we've seen. Another telco is, um, you know, one of the largest Southeast Asia telcos, and you can see Starhub brand here. Um, they, you know, have been working with us for the last couple of years, and they have been issuing a million plus uh, rewards, uh, causing a lot of engagement. You can see that during even COVID time, they increased uh, active users by 27%. Uh, customer retention has improved by 6%. Acquisition has increased by 11%. And then their NPS, which is important because telcos, um, unfortunately, has been um, not known for great customer service, but even their NPS score has improved by seven points, which was one of the more important KPIs to measure themselves uh, while they're moving into a digital transformational journey. And then another one is uh, one of the seven largest global banks that we've been working with. This is very impressive. You're talking about ROI. We're measuring this every time there's a campaign that runs and we can calculate every single touch point and what that transaction measures. So ever since they launched with us, we were able to measure even in 2019, uh, $258 million of sales or spend um, based on some of the credit card campaigns and $34 million within the first 60 days of 2020. So these are staggering results um, based on mobile first and delighting customers instantly based on user actions powered by the, the APIs on the back end. And they were able to also acquire over 225% unique customers and drove over 500,000 customer actions. So all of this can be measured and we have so much data points to, um, to play with. And this is just a teaser, obviously, but when we're talking about monetization, if you can actually tell uh, and share with your customers how much money they are able to make, and this is just what we're able to measure, um, the different monetization uh, models that they could also monetize on the Perks platform uh, could be three, four, five folds um, more than this. We, we have um, just begun to skim the surface. And then now there's another telco, one of the largest telcos in the Philippines, and there's only really two. <laughs> so you can you, you can see the, the largest one. Um, you can look it up on Google. Uh, one of the initial touch points that when we did launch with them, they were um, taking a segment of customers and they were reaching out to about a million plus customers and, and a couple of campaigns that they were driving. And these are all gamified campaigns, driving user behavior. And within that campaign and touching these types of 1.1 uh, million customers, they were able to reach almost 60 to 70% in um, engagement rate. And so this amount of customers actually drove revenue actions that contributed to the top line. And within the first you know, 100 days, we drove $1.3 million of revenue. And that was already 25X in return and in investment within 100 days. So 
how are you able to monetize on customer actions is really key. When you look at large enterprises, they only look at, or even you know, digital natives, the, the C-suite only wants to know, how are you helping me make money? How are you helping me save money? And more importantly, with the COVID, how are you going to help me drive operational efficiency? And so if we give you a platform, unfortunately, the you know, a lot of the users or buyers uh, think about um, if one customer uses you this way, they automatically think that it's going to look the same way. Um, how you use the platform, how you leverage the platform to dry monetization is really up to you because you own the content. It's similar to the whole model of you know CRMs where just because you bought CRM doesn't mean that your sales will rise. It's the head of sales and the, your revenue operations team that matters um, who's using, you know, who's really behind the CRM. So I, I think you know with Martech, um, you know Martech stacks. Uh, the same thing is really who's behind, who's the marketer, who's the digital experts and digitally savvy, data savvy folks who are behind the, the platform. But if you see that within just four campaigns, we drove that kind of revenue. Can you imagine uh, what the revenue additions and contribution uh, would be if you actually gamify all of your customer engagements? They have 80 million subscribers and we've only touched 1 million. So um, I can't even imagine how much money they would make. Um, and now we're actually looking at unifying all of their approaches to uh, customer engagement. Also, when you look at the API-based architectures, how does it become a seamless integration between all different types of external, you know, whether it's POS, CRM, backend, um, everything that we do is based on events triggers. So we're not really that uh, keen on integrating with any heavy backend uh, technology, but through the microservices layer, we can actually take events and then trigger that in real time with the customer. So everything is rule-based. Um, how do you then work with customers in motion is, the ability to uh, make sure that if we're front and, front and center at the core of the mobile app, where all of our APIs are integrated and, and it's powering the core app, we sit right in front of the customer actions. So whatever they do based on the campaigns that we drive, based on the behavior that we want them to perform, then we have to surprise and delight them and reward them accordingly. And that's where you have instant gratification and that's where the economy is moving towards. It's not like the old model now, you save your points for a year to actually burn it for an airline ticket. Well, in terms of lifestyle oriented services, um, the, the new economy, also the demographics and millennials and Gen Zs, they want instant gratification on the fly. As soon as I you know, accumulate a little bit of something, I wanted to get instantly rewarded. And so that measures as you see the transactions and the frequency of the transactions, if you reward your customers more frequently and rapidly, there will be more engagement and more of a you know, frequency of interaction. And so that's something that um, most brands um, from startups to digital natives to large enterprises, traditional enterprises, um, this is just the start of the evolution of how to measure and drive more frequency into um, your user base. Now let's look at something cool. Um, this is our APIs mapping to a geospatial view of um, our, one of our telco clients. And uh, let me play this. This is in the span of 15 days. You can see the API movement and you know our app in app behavior, how the customers are engaging with our APIs and the movement of APIs from the geolocation or geospatial uh, view. And this, I, I think this is pretty cool. Um, one of my tech uh, leads actually produced this. And, and this is just one customer. So let's multiply that with you know uh, a lot more of the customers then you can see a very busy map. But the demographics you can see is all huddle around KL. So I just wanted to share that with you and you know you can see how data moves and how rapidly we can actually see um, the busyness. This is right before COVID actually um, became a lockdown um, in March 2020. Um, and obviously in-app activity has um, multiplied uh, since COVID. And this is just a teaser for to share with you guys how APIs are moving and how we're measuring the, the activity of customer actions. Fantastic. That's uh, the end of my presentation, short and sweet. Um, if, 
anyone has any questions, I would love to um, to answer any questions. Thanks very much, Anna. Um, I, I think that's a great way to cap off this uh, this track because we started by talking about um, the, the customer interaction and then the data and you've wrapped it up into customers and data and uh, and how you how you actually leverage that there are a couple of things that um, I, I I noticed from from your presentation so you talked about super apps and and also um, I mean there are a number of firms that are have seen what what's happened with super apps and trying to become uh, super apps themselves. Well, the the challenge with that is, of course, it's hard to build everything yourself. So it leads you into partnerships. Now, um, how how do you see that uh, changing the role of the of the partnership manager or the product manager who who is actually trying to drive um, drive growth? In, uh, in in their products. Okay, I've, I've lost your, your video right now, Anna, and I can't hear you either. So I think there's, uh, I think there's something uh, gone amiss with perhaps your, your internet connection. Okay, um, but certainly I was uh, was interested in in Anna's talk about the the super apps and uh, how if you're going to partner if you're going to partner with a number of firms you, you need to be able to do that uh, uh, digitally uh, in order to scale and uh, and APIs are a significant part of that um, the uh, the other points are really though that the the marketing people, the people who are involved in these partnerships need to understand a little bit more about the, the technology part and also the technology people who are um, who are publishing APIs need to have a better understanding of how these APIs may be used and the um, and the sort of linkages that they can have with with other uh, with, with other firms, with partner firms. And Anna's other comment about um, who is behind the the CRM? Who is behind the the, the market stack? I think we've got Anna back now. Sorry about that. Okay, so I, I just wanted to pick up on the. You mentioned super apps, and I I can see that super apps only work if uh, either you build everything yourself, and not many firms can do that, or you partner. And uh, the the bigger the super app you want, the the more partners you need. So I was interested in your perspective on. How does that change the nature of the of the role of the partnership manager, um, and and also how how tech savvy they need to be in order to understand what's what's achievable, but also what's going to drive growth in, in the business? Well, I mean, if you look at what Mark Benioff mentioned, you know, Salesforce's founder and CEO, he talked about every brand will become a B two B two C. You cannot just become a B two C. Uh, and so how do you forge those partnerships around a subscription economy and new revenue model formulation? With Grab and you look at all these super apps, they're actually innovating outside of core. No longer can they survive on just ride hailing and food delivery, but there's so much more that they're actually monetizing on, you know, advertisements, ad tech, uh, marketplaces, subscription models, now going into the enterprise and all the different types of businesses. So they are essentially building B2B and becoming a platform themselves. And the, the partnerships will be the ones who, you know, technology partnerships will drive and fuel those innovation, um, I would say aspirations, as well as partnerships that from a revenue model, how creative your BD team, how creative your executive strategy is, is, you know, how do you then execute those partnerships? If you wanna, um, let's say, build a subscription economy, a subscription model, what kind of, business partnerships or lifestyle partnerships can you form that would actually um, you know, fuel and anchor some of the customers beyond just ride hailing and food delivery. You know, Singapore alone, uh, AirAsia has already announced that they're going into food delivery and ride hailing. So Tony Fernandez is already raising money to become another competitor. And then you have you know, potentially Singapore, uh, Singapore Airlines reacting to the same thing. Uh, just because AirAsia made a bold statement, if Singapore Airlines being the regional, you know, big hub, if they don't play that game as well. So why would airlines even do anything outside of being aviation? 
Is it they're calling to become a fintech company? No. Well, they, they are becoming fintech because they have to innovate outside of core. So pandemic or not, um, and you know, thank goodness that certain events and you know our global epidemic is actually creating some urgency where you know traditional enterprises where they were actually very complacent and comfortable where they were at because guess what the government will bail them out you know over and over again you know data has shown that traditional enterprises um, have performed the worst especially telcos and financial services for their shareholder value and so it's actually uh, plateaued or declined in shareholder value during pandemic, whereas every sector has raised the bar and uh, driven a lot more shareholder value. So these are the types of dynamics where you have to innovate outside of core. Mm -hmm. and, and you have to think about, well, it, traditional companies, they have a large customer base, but what is the whole, uh, what, what do their customers want in total, not just from an airline or from, or from a bank? So right, making, right. Those, making those linkages uh, across the journey. Okay. Right. All thank right. you. Well, thank you very much, Anna. Uh, great, great insights there.